What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You welcome back to the African Fighters interview, and today we have a champ, a champ, champ who is uh, looking to be a champion again very soon. Uh, that's none other than Demate Pena. Demate Pena, you welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, but yeah. So, uh, without taking too much of your time, uh, we're just going to get straight into it. So, uh, Pena, you would be in a fight uh, in RS5. RS, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, RS is a promotion down in France run by uh, uh, Fernand Lopez. You might know him as uh, Francis Ngannou's uh, former manager. But this show, RS5, what is so special about it for us African fights, fight fans, basically, is that we have one of the greatest African champions ever to be in a main event. <laughs> yeah, we do believe. I don't know. Demata, did you see the list we made of the top 10 best African champions of all time? Yeah, of so, course I did. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So, um, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. So, RS5, guys, it's uh, gonna happen in Dome de Paris. Uh, that would be on April 16. And in the main event, we have Demata Pena making his most anticipated return into the MMA cage, uh, to challenge La Plus for the Bantamweight Championship. Uh, Demata Pena. Uh, before we just get into that fight, uh, there are a lot of people out there that think you are South African, right? Uh, so can you Perfect. just <laughs> can you just tell them what you are? <laughs> well, I, I live in South Africa, I've been here for a very long time, but I am from Angola. Okay, That's you... where I was born and uh, oh. so how, yeah, how... I was born in Angola and then... yeah. yeah. At what age did you move to uh, to South Africa? I think I was seven. Oh, so seven, so... eight, yeah, and then. Now I'm like 32, so it's a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess uh, they might it's not be nice they time, might yeah. they might not be wrong calling you South African because uh, that that amount of time it's is right. is is a lifetime basically. So uh, with that it's out right. of the way, uh, the Marty Pena, you've been you've been out of action for a long while since 2017. Uh, a lot of people have been anticipated you uh, anticipating your return, me included, all African fights fans that are very smart included as well. So um, uh, how how many years now? Five years later, now you're gonna make an appearance again, and this time out of African soil in France, main event, bantamweight title. Uh, what should we expect? I think uh, most people they're expecting obviously the uh, someone to come back and then not be as as good as as what they they were before, but I honestly believe I'm gonna be better this time. You know, I've I've a lot to fight for. And I have a lot of, of, of people to prove uh, wrong, but I believe I did that with my rematch with, with Syed, mm -hmm. which was my last fight. And then I feel that I'm just a better fighter. I think that maturity that you gain from getting older, realizing that there's more to life besides fighting, then you decide to fight still, makes you realize that, you know, you're doing this not, not just necessarily as a selfish thing, but to prove to other people that it can be done. Even though I, have, I hadn't fought for so long, I'll still be able to come in there and dominate. And I feel that's what I'm going to do. Okay, okay. Uh, I saw a message on your Instagram where you said this guy, I think maybe you saw an interview or you saw something. Uh, the guy is saying uh, you do. he doesn't know what you expect, something along that line. Do you, can you can you tell, tell us through your thought process of you post making that post? Why did you make that post? So basically he had an interview himself and his brother and then it was Fernand and another French guy, some mm -hmm. combat show. Mm -hmm. He was saying that, yeah, he thinks I'm good, but his level is just so high. That's what, that's what he was saying. And I'm thinking to myself, like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I've seen his fight. He's, he's a good fighter, yes. But the level that he's saying is not a level that nobody's ever seen. It's not like a Peter Yan. Peter Yan's level is high. You know, Peter Yan is a good fighter. He's the world champion in the UFC. If he speaks like that, you can think, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Maybe who else like there that you feel like this guy is, like, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it is what it is, man. So I feel that he is a good fighter. He uses his, his range really well. He's got long hands, mm -hmm. but it's not like a level so high that you think, oh my gosh, this guy's unbelievable. You know? <laughs> okay, I see. I see what you mean. So, um, but then oh, you obviously you said you've uh, studied his fights. You've seen you've seen what he can do. You've seen his his strength and his weaknesses, basically. Uh, without throwing anything away about your game plan, how do you see yourself beating him? I think, in honest truth, I'm very realistic with myself. I understand that he's like the favorite guy there in France. He's the top boy. 
-hmm. And even the way Ares is promoting the fight, they're just pushing him a lot more, rightfully so. So I have to make sure that I go there and I fight him. I can't, um, I have to go there as a contender, so to speak. You know, it's a vacant title, but I need to go there as a contender and I, I need to push the fight. You know, make sure that I'm, I'm constant, uh, constantly striking on the feet, engaging the takedown if need be, be aggressive on the ground. And then, you know, so I need to really fight hard for this fight. I can't play my, the way I used to play in EFC where I was the champion. And if you want the belt, you need to take it from me. So I feel that like this is a fight that it, I need to go and take out, take that belt because obviously the judges will be biased for their local boy. So I, I, I feel that I need to really go out there and be dominant. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to dominate this guy from the beginning to the end. Okay, uh, you said something that caught my attention about the the way the the French media are promoting the thing. Um, do you think that the matchmakers in Aris prob put you in this position to lose? Did you think they were overlooking you when they did this matchup? Absolutely. I mean, um, Fernanda. I mean, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm really glad I'm fighting there, but it's his coach, mm -hmm. the owner of the promotion, is his coach, and then. He obviously, and I, and I think when they did the countdown here, they came, one of the other guys came here, they mentioned that Fernand thinks that, um, what's his name, Lapilos is a very good and his level is too high comparing to mine. I'm always thinking like, these guys have no idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah so, yeah, so naturally, I think it's a position where they want to just seem to be the guy that's undefeated and then look good. But there's no ways, man, that I'm that guy, you know. Yeah. I, I remember my first uh, championship fight in EFC as well. They gave me a guy that was really doing so well. He had like five, six fight winning streak, was a top guy to become champion. And then they thought, let's just give it to this Angolan kid that barely knows how to fight. Then I surprised him. And that's what's going to happen. You know, Lapilus, Lapilus is going to go in there. He's going to be confident naturally in the beginning. But as the fight goes on, he's going to see how tough I am, how strong I am, how resilient I am. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna just beat him when I start when the role start reversing that fight, you're just gonna realize that it's not gonna happen for him, man. Yeah, I, I understand. As you said, he obviously being the main eventer, being French in a in a French arena, he's gonna have the crowd behind him. So yeah, you would you only team yeah, mates, family. Yeah, so you would not only be fighting him per se, you'd be fighting uh the basically the crowd, and then you'd always also be wary of the judges as well being they are from there. Not that I'm saying not that I'm saying that they would do anything funny. Uh but uh yeah, there there would be that. But think speaking about Fernand Lopez, um a great job he's doing with uh MMA down in France. He is like uh he is the the almighty French uh, MMA. When it comes to French MMA, he is like yeah top top dog there. But uh, about you accepting to fight in Ares, I, I was wondering how did that come about? How was the negotiations? Was it like uh, you uh, knowing that your comeback fight were you like it has to be for a title? What how was it like? What, how did the communication start between you and them, Fernand Lopez and their team? How was that like, please? So basically, I was supposed to be fighting out in UAE Warriors when Sylvester just fought now. And then mm -hmm. that was the plan. But it was taking very, very long for them to get me an opponent. Um, and then in UAE Warriors, you normally only get an opponent, let's say, two weeks, three weeks before the fight. So I was like, getting a little bit you know, ir irritated because I think with my previous fights, I always knew my opponent like a month or two before. So then I then I messaged uh, Fernando and said, you know what, I see what you're doing there in France. And then Hopefully after this fight in, in UAE Warriors, I can I can fight um for you. Then all of a sudden he offered me uh his his top guy there, <laughs> Lapilos, for the title. I'm like, for the title. <laughs> That's my world. That's my world right there. So then I thought, you know what? Let me yeah, let me just fight uh, this fight in in UAE and then rightfully then I'll hopefully maybe come back and fight. Then my opponent was not I wasn't getting an opponent. Then I told my manager, you know, I said, you know what? It's a great opportunity to fight this guy. He's fought in the UFC. Beating him sets me up so, so well, man. You know, I, I've been training throughout. I, I don't feel like I've missed any beat. The only thing I haven't done really is fight, but I've been training. I constantly train. So I feel that, you know what, this guy is obviously going to underestimate me. He's, in his mind, he's going to think that it's going to be a walkover fight, which will not be a walkover fight. So I thought, you know what, I'm in a really good position. I, I told my manager to cancel the UAE Warriors fight and then I'd rather just go fight this fight and I'm very ready to fight. I've been constantly training. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready. Like this guy doesn't understand what it's going to face in them. They might be a skilled guy, but when it comes to heart, determination, that willingness to win, I don't think he, he, 
his level is with mine. I'm telling you, brother. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I do believe you, champ. I do believe you. But um, speaking about your future plans, I obviously, I don't know. I would not ask you to tell me what your contract situation is. But uh, can you now fighting in RS, let's say you win the title. Does that mean that you could also go to UAE and still fight on the Dibana? Or how, how is your how is the situation for you now? So no, it's basically a four fight uh, contract. Mm-hmm. Or I think one year as well. No, one and a half or so years. I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a UFC clause in the contract. So if you get a UFC contract, you can you can obviously go fight in the UFC. Oh. So that that's a bonus, you know. And yeah. then now the way it's looking, hopefully, Drakas wins his next fight, and maybe <laughs> we get a UFC uh, either in Nigeria, maybe in Cape Town. So yeah, was, it'll be cool go- to to get uh, called up in the UFC. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. I was gonna. I was just leaving that to the end because I would actually want to hear your thought about Ka- Gastelum versus uh, Drickers because there's there's this thing about I can see about um, Drickers, yeah. yeah yeah. So there's this thing I can see about uh, MMA fighters down in South Africa. I can see this brotherhood you guys got got over there. I really don't from from sitting from the outside. I would say I can see there's a brotherhood. And then recently there's been a surge of opportunities for uh, South African MMA fighters out of African soil. We can see. Uh, uh, Chip Fumbu uh, just had a brilliant win in UAE. Uh, Faiz had a win over there. There's also Gorimbo that's going to be fighting for the welterweight African title. And then there's you fighting for the bantamweight title. And now um, Dracos Duplessis is fighting Kevin Gaslam at, uh, at the UFC yeah. 2- 273 main event. And also for Don Madge as well. Yeah, Don, Don Madge as well. Yeah. He's going to fight in PFL as a main eventer. So... So, uh, Bokang Matsunyan is oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Bokang just got he's fighting for <laughs> number one contender fight, just happened, I think, two days ago. Now, yeah, so, right. um, uh, yeah, so how would you yeah. say, how would you say, obviously, the future of South Africa MMA is looking bright right now? I don't think I can remember a time where we see so many activities going on outside of EFC. Uh, so how do you, how would you, how would you pre- predict the future of South African MMA? Are there some killers out there that we don't know about that we should pay attention to, or what's going on now? No, absolutely. We have a lot of talent here in South Africa. And I think this this brotherhood is only more apparent now because everyone is fighting in different organizations. But when we are all fighting EFC, there's so much rivalry here between the guys. I mean, it's unbelievable. But at least now, I think the guys are more relaxed. They understand that we're not all fighting in one promotion. There's not this idea of not only EFC is the top dog. So I think it's more open now. And then here in, in South Africa, we actually have a lot of talented coaches, you know, striking, wrestling, grappling. The only problem now I find is that guys are still reluctant to go train with other guys. Uh, it was more so because everyone was fighting each other. But I think now going forward, more guys are more relaxed, going to train other places. They understand they won't fight each other. So I think that's where, that's where the growth of, of South African uh, mixed martial arts is leading to. Like for me, I train in many gyms. I understand that most of the guys are not finding errors or the sword. So it, it's more relaxed as well. And they're more relaxed when you have you go there and then they know that all your guys are not finding UFC anymore. It's like, it's more different. I think that growth is going to be more apparent the next year or so. Yeah, I, uh, well, uh, we are all for, all in for it. Uh, we'll be watching very, very closely. And uh, we wish you all the best in the, in the main event, uh, RS5. We'll be watching very closely. And we just hope all these uh, the activities that the South African fighters are doing right now is going to open more doors for African fighters to, to come through, most especially in areas. Uh, UAE doing a brilliant thing with, with the UAE Africa thing, giving us opportunities out there. It's uh, something good to see. So, um. Yeah, so do you, would I say, uh, I'll just ask you this last question. Would I say that um, you, obviously, you've been 32 years old, you have an opportunity to be a champion in Aris. Would you say, do you still have UFC as like the ultimate goal being there or being a champion? What's your ultimate goal in MMA right now? I think for, for sure, like most guys, you want to fight in the UFC. It's the best promotion in the world. I feel it's like the World Cup of fighting. You know, yeah. Most guys, you can see, they might do well. Uh, they they don't do as well in the UFC. When they go to other promotions, they do very well. Mm-hmm. You can see that the level is a lot higher in the UFC. Guys, they want it badly. So I feel that, you know, winning this next fight, uh, it gives me a chance to fight in the UFC. I feel that if I, if the fight is close, then maybe they'll give me a rematch against this guy. So, but I want to go there and dominate, just show that I'm a lot better than he is. And then coming off for so long without fighting, doing what I'm about to do, it's going to be amazing, brother. So, 
I feel that after this dominant win that I'm, I'm expecting, I think I deserve a shot in the UFC, but I'm not overlooking anybody. I've trained for an extremely, extremely hard fight. So I, I think that um, he's underestimating me more than I'm underestimating him, you know? So yeah, exactly. I feel that he, I understand he's a good fight. I've seen, I've seen his fights. Uh, he's, he's like, he fights the same way most of the time. He's very good at managing distance and he runs. In some fights he goes aggressive, some fights he runs a lot. So, but that type of fighting, I'm also very good at if it's just evading strikes. And then, so I think I'm able to ad adapt a lot more than he believes I am. And then once I grab him, man, I'm telling you, brother, he's going to understand that African power, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, 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 you, you, yeah. You mentioned UFC Africa. And um, to be honest, I'm Nigerian. I know how, Niger how the, the field of MMA is in Nigeria, how combat sports is basically in Nigeria. And I do know the infrastructure that we have at ground, but whenever I hear people talking about UFC Africa, I already know in the back of my mind that it's going to happen in South Africa. No, no questions about that. Uh, obviously, people will be some people will be disappointed with me saying that, but it's actually the the reality. But um, so it happening in South Africa, and um, I I also feel like if Drikus wins or puts a performance out this weekend Absolutely. it's gonna it's gonna trigger that 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 uh south african energy so we could get ufc down down there probably a fight night in there but um yeah so you would absolutely love to be on a card a ufc card in south africa wouldn't you yeah um, absolutely man uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay it's got okay. only fair <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay i'm just gonna mention one 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 more thing so we when we posted about your fights and posted about your uh your chances winning in your fight in aris some south african fans were in our comment section with some a bit of some bit of negativity in there so my question is you for um you obviously with your past history uh and then those com comments those people were making towards that how do you how do obviously i would i would assume that would be that wouldn't be the first time you've seen those type of comments so how would you how would how would you respond to those type of comments those situations when people talk like that how do you respond to those type of things you, you know the reality uh of, of it all is that i'm the one who faced that situation and then uh, based on a lot of things that happened i couldn't prove my case um mostly because of financial uh, reasons because you needed to get so many experts from europe and they were like charging an enormous amount of money so you know i felt you know i faced what i faced it doesn't matter what i say at, at the moment people have already made their own conclusions some they believe you and some don't at the end of the day i'm the one who's stepping in there i'm the one who's fighting um i haven't fought so long i have I paid the price for whatever had happened so either i was wrong or I was right it is what it is. It's life, you know. I can't dwell in that past. Now I have a fight coming up. That's the most important thing right now. That's what I'm gonna focus on. Those same people that are commenting when they see me, you won't believe, brother. They, oh, the Mar Pena, they give me a picture. <laughs> you know, they, I, I promise you, man. There's not never been one fan who approached me and said, "Oh, you this." Never. They always come up to me. Oh, we respect you. Give me a picture. You know. Oh, That's how people are, man. They'll 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 fakes anyway. Uh, so you have to do it for yourself, man. Okay, so uh, before I let you go, I'll just ask you to just do a prediction for me. Um, obviously, yeah. the Drakers and Gaslam fight is a very very tough fight to predict. Uh, when you keep when mm -hmm. you keep obviously sentiments aside, being that Drakers is your guy, but how how mm -hmm. do you see that fight going when it comes stylistically and also uh, the momentum that both fighters have? How do you see that fight going? Predictions, please. I mean, obviously, Gastelum, Gastelum is coming off a few losses. Is is like almost a gatekeeper in that division. It's obviously going to be a hard fight. But I feel that if Drikas keeps it really tight on the feet and takes uh, Gastelum down, I, I feel that he's going to submit Gastelum in the second round or so. That's what I really predict that. I think Drikas will finish Gastelum in the second round with a submission. He's much stronger than Gastelum, I'm telling you. He's a, he's a tough, tough guy. So I think that, you know, the striking... Yeah. I was gonna say he looks stronger, stronger than, than, than he, he looks. He looks stronger than he looks, doesn't he? He's stronger than he looks. I'm saying because obviously no, he, if you no, feel him before. Very very strong, <laughs> very very strong. So I feel that if if he doesn't want to prove a point on the feet, becomes more tight, looks for the takedown. Maybe first round or so might not get it, but leading up into the second round or third, he can submit Gastelum or oh, TK him. I'm telling you. So Drika's ground game, I feel, is probably elite level in the world, not just for UFC level. 
So I feel that it's very, very dangerous. And then, yeah, it's, it's a difficult for, diff, difficult fight for Gasolim, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people are sleeping on drinkers, and I feel that he's, he's going to take it. Yeah, yeah, he's going to make an announcement there, yeah, absolutely. Well, Champ, thank you, thank you so much for, again, honoring this interview. We really, really appreciate it. But if you don't mind, just one more, one last favor we need from you, please. Oh, thank you. If yeah. you don't mind saying, uh, oh, yo, guys, this is the Marta Pena. Uh, you can list your credentials if you wish and be like you're on the African Fighters. You're watching the African Fighters or something like that, please. All right, guys, this is the Marta Pena, soon to be Ares bantamweight champion <laughs> you're watching the african fighters <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much Jab. thank you a lot of people would, would uh would be will be tuning in as well as i am africa is with you my brother we only wish you good things and uh well thank you um just Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. It was the Mate Pena. We just had a lovely chat with him. You guys, April 16th, RS5, uh, Stade de Paris. And um, yeah, my name is Jabril. And tune to the African Fighters. We are. Come on, Africans! Uh -oh.